Car burglaries increasing in our community. How police were able to make an arrest in one of those latest cases. I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the niche. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Be Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky taking his plea for help directly to Congress today. This as his country continues to fight Russian forces nearly three weeks into a war. The latest coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. One person is recovering after an argument escalated on the city's northeast side. Police say two men started fighting behind a gas station around two this morning on Perrin Bidal, not far from Loop 410. Officers say one of the men slashed the other across the chest with a box cutter and then ran away. The person who was hurt, taken to the hospital, doing okay. At last check, police had not found the man who cut him. The death toll now rising to nine people after a fiery head-on crash in West Texas. The victims include six students and a coach from a New Mexico university who were returning home from a golf tournament in Midland. Two students were taken by helicopter to a Lubbock hospital in critical condition. That's according to the Texas Department of Public Safety. Those students attended uh, University of Southwest in Hobbs, New Mexico, near the state's border with Texas. The NTSB is now headed to the crash scene to investigate. President Biden is getting ready to deliver his remarks and his response to Ukraine's president address to Congress. Let's listen in. He speaks for a people who have shown remarkable courage and strength in the face of brutal aggression. Courage and strength that's inspired not only the Ukrainians, but the entire world. Putin is inflicting appalling, appalling devastation and horror on Ukraine, bombing apartment buildings, maternity wards, hospitals. I mean, it's, it's god awful. I was speaking about this with the, our, 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 our commander behind me here. General Milley, I mean, it just is amazing. Yesterday, we saw reports that Russian forces were holding hundreds of doctors and patients hostage in the largest hospital in Mariupol. These are atrocities. They're an outrage to the world. And the world is united in our support for Ukraine and our determination to make Putin pay a very heavy price. America is leading this effort together with our allies and partners, providing enormous levels of security and humanitarian assistance that we're adding to today, and we're going to continue to do more in the days and weeks ahead. We're crippling Putin's economy with punishing sanctions. That's going to only grow more painful over time with the entire NATO and EU behind us and many other countries. What's at stake here are the principles that the United States and the United Nations across the world stand for. It's about freedom. It's about the right of people to determine their own future. It's about making sure Ukraine never will never be a victory for Putin, no matter what advances he makes on the battlefield. The American people are answering President Zelensky's call for more help, more weapons for Ukraine to defend itself, more tools to fight Russian aggression. And that's what we're doing. In fact, we started our assistance to Ukraine before this war began as they started to do exercises along the Ukrainian border, the Russians, starting in March of last year. We took the threat of Putin invading very seriously, and we acted on it. We sent Ukraine more security assistance last year, $650 million in weapons, including anti-air and anti-armor equipment, before the invasion, more than we had ever provided before. So when the invasion began, they already had in their hands the kinds of weapons they needed to counter Russian advances. And once the war started, we immediately rushed $350 million in additional aid to further address their needs. Hundreds of anti-air systems, thousands of anti-tank weapons, transport helicopters, armed patrol boats, and other high-mobility vehicles, radar systems that help track incoming artillery and unmanned drones, secure communications equipment and tactical gear, satellite imagery and, 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 and analysis capacity. And it's clearly helped Ukraine inflict dramatic losses on Russian forces. On Saturday, my administration authorized another $200 million to keep a steady flow of weapons and ammunition moving to Ukraine. Now I'm once again using my presidential authority to, activate, uh, to activate an additional security assistance to continue to help Ukraine fend off Russia's assault. 
an additional $800 million in assistance. That brings the total of new U.S. security assistance to Ukraine to $1 billion just this week. These are the large, these are direct transfers of equipment from our Department of Defense to the Ukrainian military to help them as they fight against this invasion. And I thank the Congress for appropriating these funds. This new package on its own is going to provide unprecedented assistance to Ukraine. It includes 800 anti-aircraft systems to make sure the Ukrainian military can continue to can continue to stop the planes and helicopters that have been attacking their people and to defend their Ukrainian airspace. And at the request of President Zelensky, we have identified and are helping Ukraine acquire additional longer range anti-aircraft systems and the munitions for those systems. Our new assistance package also includes 9,000 anti-armor systems. These are portable high High, accurate, high, accurately, high accuracy shoulder-mounted missiles that the Ukrainian forces have been using with great effect to destroy invading tanks and armored vehicles. It will include 7,000 small arms, machine guns, shotguns, grenade launchers to equip the Ukrainians, including the brave women and men who are defending their cities as civilians and they're on the countryside as well. And we're and we and as well as the ammunition, artillery and mortar rounds to go with small arms, 20 million rounds in total, 20 million rounds. And this will include drones, which which uh, demonstrates our commitment to sending our most cutting edge systems to Ukraine for its defense. And we're not doing this alone. Our allies and partners have stepped up to provide significant shipments of security assistance and will continue to help facilitate these deliveries as well. The United States and our allies and partners are fully committed to surging weapons of assistance to the Ukrainians. And more will be coming as we source additional stocks of equipment that, are all, that we're ready to transfer. Now, now, I want to be honest with you. This could be a long and difficult battle, but the American people will be steadfast in our support of the people of Ukraine in the face of Putin's immoral, unethical attacks on civilian populations. We are united in our abhorrence of Putin's depraved onslaught, and we're going to continue to have their backs as they fight for their freedom, their democracy, their very survival. And we're going to give Ukraine the arms to fight and defend themselves through all the difficult days ahead. We're going to continue to mobilize humanitarian relief to support people within Ukraine and those who have been forced to flee Ukraine. In just the past few weeks, we provided $300 million of humanitarian assistance to the people in Ukraine and in neighboring countries. Tens of thousands of tons of food, water, medicine, and other basic supplies to support the people in need. Our experts on the ground in Poland and Moldova and other neighboring countries are there to make real-time assessments of the rapidly evolving crisis to get urgently needed humanitarian supplies to the people in need when they need it. And we will support Ukraine's economy with direct financial assistance as well. And together with our allies and partners, we will keep up the pressure on Putin's crumbling economy, isolating him on the global stage. That's our goal. Make Putin pay the price, weaken his position, while strengthening the hand of the Ukrainians on the battlefield and at the negotiating table. Together with our allies and partners, we're going to stay the course and we'll do everything we can to push for and end this tragic, unnecessary war. This is a struggle that pits the appetites of an autocrat against humankind's desire to be free. And let there be no doubt, no uncertainty, no question. America stands with the forces of freedom. We always have and we always will. I want to thank you all and God bless you. And I'm going to walk over and sign this legislation, sign this bill to allow the drawdown of those materials. And may God protect the young Ukrainians who are out there defending their country. President Biden at the White House announcing additional military help for Ukraine. Just a short time after Ukraine's President Zelensky addressed the U.S. Congress, the American people, uh, pleading for more help, pleading for a no-fly zone. Uh, the White House... I'm signing here... Let's listen to the President here. Here's... Delegation of authority under Section 506A1 of the Foreign Assistance Act of 1961, translated into plain English, a total of $800 million in defense. Order. 
The president talking about 800 million in aid to Ukraine, military aid, saying a billion dollars in just the last week. Again, I mentioned the no-fly zone there a moment ago. The White House uh, saying no to that, along with NATO allies, saying it would bring us closer to possible conflict with Russia. Let's listen. I'm not going to comment on that right now. I'm not going to comment on anything other than what I've told you. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, you're going to go to Poland? Mr. President, you're going to go to Poland? Correspondents in the room trying, but the president not taking questions today. He talked about anti-aircraft systems, anti-tank systems uh, being sent, anti-armor. Uh, in addition, uh, drones as well. This was all reporting that Cecilia Vega had provided us with earlier today. Let's go right to our chief White House correspondent because, Cecilia, uh, the president talked about listening to this in the private residence. That's not something you often hear uh, from a president on any issue, uh, saying that this was a, a moving message from President Zelensky, uh, and he thanked the Congress for supporting him in this effort to get more military aid to Ukraine right away. And David, I think this uh, very much was a response to those pleas, if you will. And we're going to have more on those pleas a little later in our newscast. We want to get you up to date right now, though, on what's going on on the ground in Ukraine. Kiev once again hit by Russian forces today. Rescuers had to rush to a residential neighborhood to help more than 30 people after they got trapped under rubble. ABC's Ian Panel brings us up to date from the war zone. The mayor of Kyiv has now put in place a curfew lasting until Thursday morning. But the sounds of intense battles being fought are rolling around the edge of this city. And this morning, Russia's lead negotiator in the peace talks saying Ukraine's proposed that it adopt neutral status along the lines of Austria or Sweden. Now, that would mean not joining NATO, but keeping an army and being free to potentially pursue European Union membership. Now, the Ukrainians haven't denied that, but have suggested it's a much more complicated picture. If it's true, it could be a significant shift towards a peace deal. But a U.S. official warning the diplomacy doesn't seem to be going anywhere for now. Meanwhile, the fighting is certainly not easing for the time being. Once again, the capital Kyiv struck by Russia this morning. Another residential neighborhood hit. Rescuers there helping more than 30 people to safety who were trapped under the rubble. This morning, U.S. Defense Secretary Austin meeting with NATO counterparts ahead of next week's summit where President Biden meets with leaders from all all NATO countries to discuss the war. Ian Panel, ABC News, in Kyiv, Ukraine. And with his nation under constant attack, relentless fire from Russia, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky making an impassioned plea to the U.S. for more help. You heard the president refer to that. He spoke to Congress this morning. He showed an emotional video of the destruction that's going on there. And he asked President Biden to lead the world for peace and put a no-fly zone into place over Ukrainian airspace. Peace in your country doesn't depend anymore only on you and your people. It depends on those next to you, on those who are strong. Strong doesn't mean weak. Strong is brave and ready to fight for the life of his citizens and citizens of the world. President Zelensky also said the U.S. must sanction Russian lawmakers and block imports. It was a packed auditorium filled with bipartisan lawmakers watching this video as Zelensky likened the Russian invasion to Pearl Harbor and the terror attacks of September 11th. Another day with fire danger here across South Texas. Dry air, gusty winds. We'll talk more about that and when we'll see our next chance of rain coming up. And a couple of former San Antonio High School stars got March Madness kicked off last night with a couple of play-in games. Larry Mears with the highlights. San Antonio police say that he was caught in the act, but what he was caught doing wasn't particularly rare these days. They arrested a man in connection with at least a couple of car burglaries on the northeast side in one of those neighborhoods there, not far from Interstate 35 and Ritterman Road. Katrina Weber reports they say he did not exactly go willingly. The back of a patrol car is where this man ended up after arriving here on a bicycle. San Antonio police believe he was up to no good in the 4200 block of Chestnut Hill. They caught up with him and a backpack full of items before five this morning after getting a call about someone breaking into cars. It's a very big issue here in and around the city, um, huge. Police say this time they made an arrest. 
A witness told officers that man was rifling through this truck and another vehicle outside a home. As soon as the owner activated his alarm, the suspect took off. But police say the owner caught him and held him until they arrived. Police say that suspect had tried several times to get away, including once when he ran down this drainage ditch, but they managed to catch him and take him down. And when they brought him back uh, to try to avoid him taking off again, they took him down. He ended up with a cut and bump on his head. After he and the officers were checked out by investigators and paramedics, the suspect was taken to a hospital. Although no one else was hurt, police advise against confronting criminals who may be armed. Whether it be a knife or gun, and we won't, don't want them to find out the hard way. Uh, if at all possible, try to get us the best descriptions possible in the direction of flight. Police say it's best to put your fingers to work by calling them. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. So yesterday was the perfect day. So if yesterday was the perfect day, what is today? Today is the sequel. Of the perfect of the perfect day. day. Okay, we'll go with that. I like that. I like, I like sequel. I mean, this is this is a good one. Uh, it, temperatures will be a little bit warmer uh, today than they were yesterday, but we'll see less wind, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. Still beautiful, no matter no matter how you look at it. Uh, the aquifer, though, down seven tenths of a foot, six fifty-seven point eight. We're still in stage one restrictions, and looking at the pollen count, everything's low: molds, juniper, elm, and oak, all there. We do uh, have some dry conditions out there, some red flag warnings in place, also some rain chances though down the line. We'll look at that forecast coming up. Welcome back. We got some news last hour, not some good news, that uh, earthquake occurred in Japan. This was a 7.3 magnitude earthquake. That's a big one. This is about 57 kilometers east northeast of Nami, Japan, just off the coast there. But this is near Fukushima. If you remember the the plant that suffered damage during the tsunami several years ago, there are two million power people within Tokyo without power at this hour. So we're hearing and then the tsunami warnings have also been issued. There is no threat to the United States with the tsunami. Uh, but they are watching the waves there in Japan. So not a great situation there. Looks like there is going to be some damage in and around the northern part of Japan. We'll keep you posted there. Meantime, we go live for you outside. We've got blue skies here. It is beautiful. Once again, 71 degrees at the airport. You go down to Stinson, it's six degrees warmer, 77 there. 73 Kelly, 71 at Randolph. Winds are picking up some. They are not as strong as they were yesterday. So we'll see less wind here in town. 73 New Braunfels, 72 Gonzales, 71 in Kerrville, 74 right now in Uvalde, 79 down in Catula. So there will be some 80s on the map today. A little closer look here, 70 in Boulevardi, 68 Bernie Stage, 72 Comfort, 75 right now in Rio Medina. Our forecast today, we get up to 80 by 3 p.m. Our, our high temperatures around 4 or 5, we'll top out 83. By 6 p.m. we're at 81, dropping down into the 70s by 7 and 8 p.m., then eventually 60s, 65 by 10 p.m., and by midnight we're down to 60. Nothing that's terribly cold there. And the dew points, they are important today. Yes, they are low here in San Antonio, but they're up just a hair from where they were yesterday into the 40s. You can go out west, though, these dew points are still really low. Dew points in the 20s and 30s. Gustier winds out west, too. This means we have a fire threat. We saw several grass fires yesterday. The main threat's going to be west of I-35 today, but I'd say even here in San Antonio, we're not out of the woods when it comes to these grass fires. We have not gotten much rain. We know that. So the situation is not great. Low humidity, gusty winds, outdoor burning obviously is not recommended, and any fires that develop will spread rapidly. Just a heads up, we're going to get more gusty winds the next couple days too, so this fire threat is not over with. We will see a little bit more moisture tomorrow, especially tomorrow morning. That will lead to some brief morning fog. I don't think it sticks around very long. And then by late tomorrow, another front comes through and those dew points drop off again. By the weekend, still dry, but by early next week, we see the dew points jumping back up to the muggy territory. And my hope is that on Monday, we'll at least get some rain. The question is, what form does that come in? And it has been, by the way, 40 days since we've had over a tenth of an inch of rain at San Antonio International. That was on February 3rd, 1.53 inches. And since really uh, October, we haven't had much rain at all. We're 4.61 inches below average since November 1st. Not a great situation to be in when you get these gusty winds and dry air. So here's a look at our rain chances. And right now we're focusing in on Monday with a 40% shot. Now, with that being said, 
we could see some spring like storms on Monday too. So that's something we're going to have to watch. It's that time of year and the setup is there. We'll keep you posted. But here is a look at seven day 85 tomorrow. Some morning fog front comes through. We'll get some chilly mornings Friday, Saturday and Sunday in the 40s. But we warm up into the 70s during the afternoon and then Monday is a day we'll focus on 79 40% chance of rain. After that, it clears out. And we're back in the 80s on Tuesday, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. The Spurgers could use some perfection. <laughs> Yeah, they need perfection they need tonight. something. But I'll tell you what, the Thunder, second worst team in the Western Conference. Oh, watch it, though. Hopefully. Watch it, because you know what happens. When yeah, don't jinx this. Like that. But at the same time, <laughs> we know the Spurs need to play solid from start to finish. And Keldon Johnson, who has improved every single season, probably needs to be one of the guys attacking the Thunder tonight. And a San Antonio area basketball player scored the first points of the men's NCAA tournament. We got it coming up. Jalen Jackson. Yeah, nice former Wagner basketball Ray. star Jalen Jackson scored the first points in this year's NCAA men's hand. basketball tournament in big board sports. In the NBA, the Spurs will continue their seven game homestand tonight when they host the Oklahoma City Thunder, the fourth and final meeting between the two sides this regular season. The Spurs lead the series two to one. On top of that, San Antonio is looking to snap a two game losing streak after falling to the Pacers 119 to 108 and the T Wolves 149 to 139. In that game, Spurs small forward Keldon Johnson scored a career high 34 points. He shot 13 for 21 overall and five for nine from three point range. He's now averaging a career best 16.3 points per game and continues to improve every season. You know, just growing as a player, I feel like each and every game I'm growing, uh, Pop stays on me, the coaches stay on me, my teammates stay on me to, you know, continue to, to be better each and every day, you know, and um, my teammates put me in spots to, you know, be successful, whether it's the kickouts for the threes or, you know, getting in rotation so I can drop to the basket. So uh, I think uh, without my teammates, you know, none of it would be possible. Without my coaches, none of it would be possible. But, you know, I just think that uh, as a collective unit, they trust me, I trust them. And uh, my teammates put a lot of faith in me. And, uh, uh on the other end, I trust him as well. Speaking of trust, DeJounte Murray has a lot of it when it comes to Keldon because Murray often feeds him the ball in crunch time. But he's not the only spur DeJounte believes in no matter if it's the first quarter or the final minutes of a close ball game. I mean, I trust all my teammates. It's not just Keldon Johnson. Uh, I trust everybody. So that's my style of game. If I see you, I'll turn down the shot to get you the ball. So uh, I love his confidence. You know, I tell all of them to shoot it, not just for the benefit of me, just the benefit of the team. Uh, we want to score. We want to get stops. We want to score the basketball. So, uh, you know, I love, love just the confidence of them letting it fly, getting threes up or driving to the basket for themselves or a teammate. Spurs will host the Thunder tonight at 730 at the AT&T Center, and the Spurs are favored by 13 and a half points. The NCAA men's basketball tournament tipped off yesterday with the first four featuring number 16, Texas A&M Corpus Christi versus number 16, Texas Southern. Wagner High School alum Jalen Jackson scored the first points of the tournament this year on this drive in the first half. He fakes a three and then drives in and scores. Jackson played 28 minutes and he scored five points to go with two rebounds, three steals and one assist. His head coach is San Antonio native Steve Lutz, who graduated from East Central, but Texas Southern goes on to win 76-67 to end the Islander season and the Tigers will face number one Kansas tomorrow. The second game featured Indiana and Wyoming, two 12 seeds looking to advance in the East region. First half, the ball goes to Brendan Wenzel from O'Connor High School, and he goes three ball for the Wyoming Cowboys. Wenzel scored five points in 37 minutes to go with four rebounds and one steal. But Indiana, who's in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2016, takes it by the final 66 to 58, and they will play fifth seeded St. Mary's on Thursday. So hopefully that eases the pain for Justin. He was upset that Wyoming didn't did, did get in and a and didn't. So ah. He probably wasn't rooting for Wyoming last Yeah, you know, you got to root for the local guy. Brendan Winslow, come on, Jay. I was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Justin. He's still, he's still upset about a and not getting in. And losing in Wordle today. Oh. Researchers oh, wow. say sleeping with even a little light in the room could be bad for your health. Reasons to turn out that light coming up in your next half hour. And more young people are experiencing strokes. A look at the symptoms to be aware of, plus the preventative steps you can take at your next doctor's visit.
Protecting your home goes beyond security concerns. Turns out there could be some hidden hazards inside your house. Coming up today at 5, 12 in your size, Marilyn Moritz explains how you can protect your home from fires, falls, and other hidden hazards. We've got some late breaking news this noon. The San Antonio Police Department releasing the names of the officers involved in that deadly shooting on the west side two days ago. There are, the officers' names are Adam Rule. He is a six-year veteran of the department. Gus Vallis, a four-year veteran. And James Quintanilla, who has been on the force for 13 years. All three are on administrative duty following the shooting of Kevin Johnson Monday afternoon at North Elmendorf and Carter, just a few blocks away from Woodlawn Lake. Officials say the officers opened fire on Johnson after he pulled a gun when they were trying to arrest him on an outstanding felony warrant. We'll have more on that story later today. Meantime, later this afternoon, the Federal Reserve expected to increase interest rates. It's all in an effort to lower the cost of living for average Americans. The Fed has kept rates at zero since the pandemic started. That's helped the economy by helping businesses and consumers borrow and spend money. Well, that ability to spend has boosted demand for big, tic big ticket items. And now the supply, supply rather, is struggling to keep up with all of that. Add to that the rising energy costs and new numbers showing 7.9% increases in the consumer price index year over year. Inflation is so bad, some experts are worrying there will be a recession. Firefighters here in Texas are getting ready for possible wildfires this week. The state is putting approximately 150 firefighters and 30 fire engines at the ready. As conditions conducive to wildfires are in the forecast, Governor Greg Abbott says areas alongside and west of Interstate 35 and into South Texas are at risk due to extremely dry conditions. The Texas Infrastrate, Intrastrate Fire Mutual and System is mobilizing six strike teams to prepare. The state is also positioning 14 air tankers and five helicopters. And just yesterday, a massive grass fire in Atascosa County took hours to contain. As of last night, it was still burning at FM 3387 and Highway 16 South in Atascosa County. The fire marshal says about 2,500 acres were burned yesterday. Outside with life, can't we to keep talking about how beautiful these days are, but boy, we do need some rain or we could be in some serious trouble pretty soon. So dry. Uh, it's a true statement. And it's not just us. It's a large portion of the state that is very much in drought. We, we have the technology now where we can see where some of these fires are. Take a look at this map. And what we're looking at here, those red dots represent where we are seeing some grass fires. And then the gray area shows where we may be seeing some smoke. Now, we're not detecting a lot of this. This is super light as far as the smoke is concerned, but you can see where we're detecting some of those grass fires and they are going to pop up. I think we're going to see that next couple of weeks unless we get some good rain because we're also moving into the season of gusty winds. And when you get dry air and gusty winds combined, that's a problem. That's going to be the case today out west. Red flag warnings in effect for our western counties. These uh, counties in Pink here, Del Rio, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, Outdoor Burning, obviously not recommended. Any fire that develops there today can spread pretty rapidly with some gusty southerly winds. And it's not just our western counties. That threat is even here around San Antonio, uh, just not as great as it is out west. Uh, current temperatures across the state, we're already up to 81 in Laredo, 72 Abilene, 69 Lubbock, 72 in Dallas. If you take the drought out of it in the dry air, it is beautiful. We've had a good stretch here for spring break, including here in San Antonio. Here's our forecast for today. We'll get those temperatures up close to 80 by 3 p.m., 83 by 4 p.m., dropping down to the 70s by 7 and 8. Mostly sunny skies. Winds will pick up somewhat, I think, as we get into tonight, dropping down into the 60s. And there could be some patchy fog for your morning commute on your Thursday. We'll have more on that in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. UTSA working in some new faces as they take advantage of spring ball. Larry Mirrors with more on their workouts coming up. Just a little bit of light can cause a lot of harm when you're trying to get some sleep. Sleeping with a lamp on could lead to health issues. That's according to a study from Northwestern University School of Medicine. In that study, a team analyzed 20 healthy people in their 20s as they spent two nights in a sleep lab. They found that being exposed to even a moderate amount of ambient light 
during sleep caused heart rates to rise. Researchers say that can throw off the functions of the nervous system, which helps restore our bodies while we sleep. They also found people who slept with a light had insulin resistance in the morning. According to the researchers, impaired glucose and cardiovascular regulation put people at risk for heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Model Haley Bieber now home after being hospitalized last week for stroke-like symptoms. Strokes are affecting more people 49 and younger, according to the American Heart Association. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a look at the signs you need to look out for and how you can lower your risk. Haley Bieber called it one of the scariest moments, being hospitalized after having symptoms of a stroke. Thankfully, she says she recovered completely within a few hours. Only about 10% of strokes occur in people less than 50 years of age, so it's probably not on their radar screen. While strokes in younger people aren't common, the president of the American Heart Association says the numbers are trending up. People are heavier at younger ages, and that means they have more risk factors for stroke, including things like higher blood pressure and diabetes. Smoking is always a risk factor for stroke. When it comes to a stroke, getting care as quickly as possible is crucial, and one word can help you remember and identify symptoms. It's called FAST, F-A-S-T. The F stands for facial drooping. So if one side of your face is suddenly drooping, pay attention. The A stands for arm or leg weakness on one side. The S stands for speech difficulty. And the T means time to call 911. Young people should also know their numbers, talk to their doctor about blood pressure, blood sugar, and blood cholesterol, which are all things that can contribute to stroke risk and make a plan to control those if need be. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Looking outside with live cam. Yeah, a sequel to a pretty day. Part two. Agreed. My kid, I picked her up from, uh, from wait, school Wait a minute, your kid? That's I said wait. my kid. That might be, don't. Your kid, <laughs> my kid. Come picked on. her up from school yesterday. She was so excited about the spinning outside, playing on the playground for like hours. It just kept them outside And the all sun's day. out much longer. It is. I mean, it's nice. It really is beautiful. 71 degrees so far today. 44 was the low this morning. Records are 93 and 27. Set back in 1887 and 1947. We'll talk about uh, the weekend forecast and we'll look ahead to next week where there is a chance for storms coming up. Welcome back. We talked about earlier that that fire threat. We do have burn bans in many of the counties here around South Texas. I want to show you the map there. You can see many of them uh, are under burn bans. And just because uh, a county or two isn't lit up here, that doesn't mean that you're not. Uh, these are the counties that have reported it. Uh, but there's a lot, and that's because we've been so, so dry with the winds picking up. that The fire threat really is there. We've emphasized that quite a bit today, but it's worth repeating. And you know, it's been 40 days now since we've had over a tenth of an inch of rain at the airport. Anything significant. That was back on February 3rd. 4.61 inches below average since November 1st. So you add this on to what we saw at the end of last year, and it's just not a great situation. We are in desperate need of rain. You're not even going to find a cloud today. It is uh, all blue skies out there. 71 degrees, sunny skies with a southerly breeze at about 9 miles per hour. Now, the good news here is the dew point is trying to creep up some. This number is higher than it was last couple of days, so there's just a little bit more moisture in place here in town. Not the case out west, which is why they have that red flag warning, as we showed you earlier, places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Temperatures are beginning to ramp up. It's 80 in Pleasanton, 79 in Catula, 73 in New Braunfels, just to the west at 72 in Boulevardi, 74 Comfort. You're checking in at 77 down there at Stinson and 79 for our friends in Divine. As far as temperatures go today, you'll make it into the 80s. At least most of us will. 83 Castroville, 81 in Hondo, 81 in New Braunfels. Kerrville should be up around 76, all looking at sunny skies this afternoon. Dew points, as we showed you, trying to increase a little bit. You'll notice right there around Victoria, there's a little bit of a green tint. That's some added moisture that's trying to work in our direction. But any sort of uh, increase in moisture is going to be short lived because we have a front coming through tomorrow. Well, initially we'll have a dry line, so drier air comes in and then a front comes through and just pushes the dry air through all of the area. But there's going to be enough moisture return, I think, tonight that maybe a little bit of fog may develop here around San Antonio. It'll be patchy. I don't ex expect it'll be uh, all that thick, but something to watch tomorrow morning. 
Uh, here's a look at the dew point tracker, and this kind of tells the story here. Dry today, but a little bit of an increase in moisture leads to some fog tomorrow, and then the dew points drop off again. We get a very dry Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, Monday, or at least Sunday night into Monday morning, we get a rapid increase in moisture. That's going to lead to more clouds cover and hopefully some rain chances, and here's why. We've got one system moving away, another system just off the coast of California. This is the one that's going to bring the front through as we get into tomorrow and tomorrow night. It's this system, though, that's back out over Alaska, that's way out there, that's going to move through on Monday. This is what is going to give us the lift, I, I hope, that we need to get some showers and storms going. Now, it is a time of year, too, where we have to watch for severe weather. So it's a double edged sword here. We, we need the rain, but we do have to watch for some stronger storms and that's going to be early next week. I don't want to jump into specifics yet because it's just too early as far as timing goes and that sort of thing. But it is a day we need to watch 85 Thursday, 74 Friday. That's uh, those temperatures are a little cooler behind the front and it will be windy on Friday and dry. So Friday is another day where we have to watch for the fire threat. We'll get some chilly mornings Saturday and Sunday, but nice afternoons. The weekend looks fantastic as we officially Head into spring. There's your 40% chance of rain on Monday, 79, and we should clear out after that storm system. Sunny skies on Tuesday with a high of 82. We'll be right back. The Spurs will look to snap a two game losing streak tonight when they host the Oklahoma City Thunder at the AT&T Center. The Spurs are currently 12th in the Western Conference, two games behind 10th place New Orleans. OKC is second to last in the West, and they've lost six games in a row. Since getting traded to the Spurs, guard Josh Richardson has made an impact. Zach Collins says Josh brings some nastiness to the team. We all know Pop loves that. Josh was asked about his nastiness this morning after shoot around. I think I just play with the edge. Um, you know, every time I'm out there, I'm always talking. I'm always, you know, I'm not afraid to talk to other teams. I'm not afraid to, you know, get in there if things get dicey. You know, Zach got into a little argument the other day. I'm usually the first guy there. Um, and I think, you know, the biggest thing he means by that is just playing with force, playing with an edge, you know, getting up in guys on defense. He's very competitive, very, uh, has a lot of confidence in himself. Um, doesn't matter who we're playing on any given night, he goes in with the same confidence and he's been pretty vocal in the huddles, especially when we're down and we got to go on a run or, or the other team goes on a run and we need to come back and, you know, weather the storm. He's very vocal with that stuff, so that's been good. San Antonio will host OKC 7:30 tonight at the AT&T Center. In men's college basketball, NIT action last night. North Texas edged out Texas State 67-63, and Texas A&M defeated Alcorn State 74-62. While the UTSA Roadrunners enjoy a spring break, they manage to get in four days of hard work and spring workouts before a few days off. And now that they've had success in second year, under second year head coach Jeff Trailer, they know they face a much tougher road ahead after the 12 win season and a Conference USA championship. And that means relying on super seniors again, like outside linebacker Dadrian Taylor to carry their success forward. So why come back for one more season? Why not? I mean, I was here in 2017 when we were in the basement, you know what I'm saying? So, like, to see all of this, you know what I'm saying, come to life and not want to be a part of it one more time, you know what I'm saying? I could. Oh, it was no fact I was coming back. I mean, who wouldn't want to play for Coach Trailer and it, this group of coaches? So that that was already – I knew I, as soon as I got hurt last year, I knew I was coming back just because we got one of the best coaches in the country. And second is just I, I need to work on being a more leader, so – if I decide to coach or something, I know how to do that or anything, just being more vocal. Expect them to do just like last year's, you know, super seniors and, you know, be the backbone of our leadership and and be the ones that hold our kids accountable to our brand, our 210 Triangle Toughness culture. And it's very important to us and it only works if the players are bought into it. And those 13 are extremely bought in. And how about this? UTSA will host Houston in their season opener on September the 3rd in the Alamo Dome, followed by Army and Texas on the road. Tough three games to start Tough the season. Games. They need some give me some nasty t-shirts too. Got to get those out now. Give me some nasty. Josh know. What's it be been, 10 years? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it was against the Thunder in a playoff series. Well branded. You know, yeah. well branded. <laughs> they need a little nasty. These guys don't need nasty. They just they're just calm, cool, and they're super nice. We just need food. <laughs> or, they, or they get hangry. Exactly. And one of those meals you can eat any time of the day is breakfast. Ooh, we got a spot for you. Yes, we do. And Christopher Edwards with Snooze and AM Eatery is here. He's got fire in one hand and bananas in another. What more do you need for breakfast, right? <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it should be a good one, huh? <laughs> what are we doing eyebrows. with the fire? What the, besides burning down the kitchen, yeah. what's the secret to uh, cooking with fire and bananas? Oh, I hadn't planned that far ahead. I thought you guys just wanted me to bring some fire. <laughs> okay, we are making, what do you call this? Uh, we are doing toast? funky monkey French toast. We're gonna be making a funky monkey French toast today. Number one rule, fire is hot. We're gonna use that hot, hot heat to turn this banana into candy. What could possibly right. go wrong? All right. Then it is a wild Wednesday at Holly Fletcher from Fletcher Reptile and Bird Rescue is here. You have the bird, you have the reptile mm -hmm. in the other hand. I Who's do. Who's over there? Juju, he's a western hog nose. Okay, and is he gonna get any bigger than that? No, he's full grown. He's still very scary. So is that native to Texas? Um, yes, they actually are. Okay, a lot of great uh, animals that we have here right now. They're all up for adoption. You can also donate as well. And a popular Instagram chef shows us an Irish twist on whoopie pie. Hmm, an Irish whoopie pie, I like that. <laughs> all right, it is beautiful out there. We have an hour extra daylight, but the question is, Daylight saving time. Yay or nay, basically. Or huh? <laughs> yes, yay or nay, right? Yeah. You like it or not? <laughs> Answers coming up on SA Live. Stick around. For some people, it's spring break. A great opportunity to go exploring. And you don't have to go far to enjoy the great outdoors. We've got a list of 10 trails you can explore in San Antonio, including the Hillview Nature Trail Loop at Eisenhower Park and the Morning Star Boardwalk Trail at Ladyburg Johnson Park. You can find a full list of things to do. It's in the things to do section of our website. Great to take a walk in the park. Uh, 83 degrees this afternoon, a little, little warm in the afternoon, but the, the mornings and evenings are fantastic. Uh, 54 tomorrow morning, we could see a little bit of patchy fog for your St. Patrick's Day, but 85 in the afternoon. Front comes through late tomorrow night. That brings some more gusty winds on Friday, 74. Some cool mornings, and of course, Monday is a day we'll focus on for a chance for some showers and storms, guys. That looks refreshing. Thank you. I just want to say funky monkey French toast with fire. I'm, I'm good. You're good? I'm good. You got through that. Now, are you hungry for it? Because SA Live's got that coming up. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Well, hello and happy Wednesday. It is an absolutely beautiful day down here at Market Square. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. Mike Osterhage's silky voice. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know about And just think, in a couple of weeks, everybody's going to be down here just enjoying Market Square for Fiesta. Oh, this is so beautiful. I could just stay out here all day long in all the beautiful sunshine and daylight out here, which mm -hmm. raises a question, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So lots of sunshine, but you know, have you been tired? Because daylight saving time can be tough for a lot of us. You know, because we just had the time change. However, if you did not hear the news, there's an article on KSAT.com talking about how the United States Senate just unanimously, unanimously passed a measure yesterday to make daylight saving time permanent throughout the year. Of course, it has to go through Congress and get signed by the president, so that's still a wait and see situation. That raises the question, however. So we want to know, would you rather make daily daylight saving time permanent, standard time permanent, God's or, time, as my mom's called it, <laughs> or keep the time change? I'm already confused. Daylight saving time or standard time or time change? What just, would you rather have? Just tell me what time it is right now, Mike. Just, just that. I I'm vote for standard time. Okay, okay, standard time it is then, all right? So <laughs> share your comments and let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And you might see your answers a little later in the show. Well, and of course, with that time change, you know, mornings have changed a little bit, but oh, that doesn't mean you got to skip a good breakfast or brunch. And one local restaurant really knows how to make breakfast and brunch in the morning special. Oh yes, Christopher Edwards from Snooze and Ann Eatery is here to show us some of the brand new and over the top items on their menu. Everything we have is over the top, that's what I we do. Like but it. today we are making a funky monkey French toast. A funky monkey, funky French, monkey French toast. Oh, there's a French picture toast. Of it Isn't right it pretty? There. Oh, she is a pretty one. Uh, now, just like any French toast, you're going to start with bread, but we're starting with homemade banana bread. Banana bread? Ban Banana bread. bread. Notice I didn't say banana nut bread because okay. if you've got a nut allergy, you still have a seat at the table. 
Uh, but we are making banana bread, and the first thing you're going to do is give that a bath. And what uh, is it bathing in? Right mm -hmm. here, you are bathing this in liquid magic. That is a little bit of scrambled egg, some vanilla, some love, some sugar, a little bit of elbow grease, and your own personal touch. Now, once you feel it's been good and bathed, okay. right there on the griddle. And you don't, like, drench it in here. This is just kind of a coating on top, right? Right, right, right. So what you you just want it to really touch the edge of the of the toast. You don't want it to suck, soak all the way in. You just want that good crust, that great flavor, that, that French toasty okay. goodness. But then, around our parts, you can't have banana bread without a little bit of fire. Flambe. Oh, and it looks like we, oh, there she goes. Woo! That's on fire now. Number one rule of fire is fire is hot. So first you're going to take that <laughs> banana right there, mm -hmm. fresh banana, dip it right there in the sugar, little dunkaroo, just dunk. Yes, All there right. it goes. And we're going to take that fire, woohoo, there she goes. Uh, and then you just take that can oh. of burning fire uh, and run that fire back and forth across that there banana right there until you start to see the sugar just melt. Look oh, at it. look at that. Getting crispy and delicious. You see how it bubbles up right do, away? Do you That's want it to kind of get good. browned up a little bit? It does. It, it, oh, okay. it'll, it'll brown up a little bit. You'll see it start yep. to bubble. Once you can really smell the caramel coming at you, you know you've got yourself a stew going, baby. Uh, so we are going to take this banana and let it cool for a second. Okay. Okay. That French toast is looking good over there, Mike. You've been practicing? I think so. I'm okay. really proud of you. Thank you so much after what happened with the pan Pancakes last time I was here. <laughs> so we've got it's still on fire. Uh, we're gonna take that beautiful French toast and put this right here. There we go. Those are the, the done ones. Put there, these so. here. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you take it from that plate, put it in this identical plate right here. Yes. Okay. Here. Yes. Yes. Thank okay. you. There we go. I was Wonderful. For something. Okay. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna just. Just the art is in mm -hmm. the presentation. The okay. devil is in the deep. Look at oh, that. You see that go. right there? Oh, that all makes all the difference right. in the world. Beautiful. And okay. we're done. Just kidding. So now we're going to take some of this delicious caramel right here. Okay. Again, made in house. Everything here was made in house except for the bananas. Those were made in nature. Uh, so put as much or as little caramel as you want. On top? Right there. Right there on top. Just, oh my so goodness. So the caramel takes the place of any sort of like gooey. a syrup or something. Absolutely. Syrup Traditionally, okay. you're going to be looking at maple syrup and at snooze. We've got some of the best maple syrup in the world, slope side maple syrup. But today we're doing homemade caramel. Now some sweetened Mars Capone cheese right here. Just right there on top. Right here. Love it. Is Absolutely. That anything mixed in with that or just uh, So we're going to take a, an Italian Mars Capone cheese and we are going to whip that. Uh, a bunch of air, some powdered sugar, and a little bit more vanilla to give it that Nice sweet kick. Okay. Finish that off right here with these candied pecans. Now, if you want a candy pecans at your house, you're going to need a little bit of sugar, a little bit of egg white, and some thyme. Uh, these do take thyme and cinnamon, and oh, they are perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish this off right here if I can, because it's finished when it gets powdered sugar. Ooh, that but looks it good. Also, is finished with the when funky it does monkey on good. Top. The funky monkey comes on top. Are you ready to take that yes. banana? Uh huh. Now that okay. banana is going to be good, but you don't want to eat the peel. Nope. So go ahead and okay. take that out right there. Oh, that looks and good. And set that on top. On now top? this funky monkey, it's perfect. Nailed it. It's beautiful. This funky monkey French toast is going to be available uh, forever. As far as I know, this is a fan favorite. So we've put this on the menu and we are leaving it on the menu. Uh, but today with this funky monkey French toast, you can give back to a wonderful organization called Pink. Uh, we're celebrating our fifth birthday at Snooze the Quarry. And to celebrate our birthday, since our birthday falls in Women's uh, History Month, we wanted to pick an organization to give back to women, uh, the prevention and cure of cervical cancer. So pink.ngo, we are giving back 10% of our sales today um, to support this wonderful organization looking to cure cancer. And you got right. another one coming up starting tomorrow. We've right? got a brand new give back starting tomorrow. We're, this is San Antonio, right? Fiesta's coming up, and Fiesta's a party with a purpose. At Snooze, we've got pancakes with a purpose, and that uh, purpose yes. is given back to the earth, given back to our community. Speaking of those pancakes, we're going to be making those a little bit later on. So head on over to Snooze right there at the quarry. They don't take reservations, but you can download the app and get online and maybe get in line right there and try the Funky Monkey pancake, Funky Monkey French Toast. Pardon me. And if you'd like more information on Snooze and AM Eatery, of course, just go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, well, let's get this show really going with our Wild Wednesday. And it's not just dogs and cats looking for a family, reptile and bird friends 
are often left looking for a loving home. And that's where our friend Holly Fletcher from the Fletcher Reptile and Bird Rescue comes in. Welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm doing good, and you guys? Good. good. Okay, who did you bring with you today? Okay, so on my right I have Duster. He is a Moluccan cockatoo. Oh my gosh, and um, how how old is he and how long do they live? We're guessing he's about 10 to 15. We don't mm -hmm. really know. Like I said, my rescue, we mm -hmm. get told he's roughly right. about. Okay, he's got an upside down cone mm -hmm. of shame on. What happened So here? he, like when we stress, we eat and all that stuff. So him, he mm -hmm. plucked and scratched until he bled all the way around his shoulder right here. Oh, poor baby. Around here. So he's wearing the cone of shame so we could break him of that stress yes. habit. Now these things live, usually outlive their owners, right? Yes, yes. About 60 to 80 years roughly, mm -hmm. give or take, depending on the, the situation. So. Right. So folks need to think about that yes, when yes. they... And they're not the cleanest thing either, mm -hmm. right? No. So Moluccan cockatoos are dender birds. Um, they also have temper tantrums where they throw food. Um, their poop is just gross also. Um, and they're very loud. Very, very, very loud. But they're loud. very loving, so... <laughs> they are, yeah. I mean, he, he... If you work with them really good, they, you know... They do curl up to you like he does. So, Aww. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Next. you know he does like to dance, right? He does. Yeah. He does. Okay. And he likes to sing too. I'm sorry, yes, sing. he does. Yes. Does can he sing a song on cue? No, no, unfortunately not. But they, but cockatoos do speak, right? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh. Here's one of them. Let's see. <laughs> Loves his reflection, the little yes. wolf whistle in the mirror right there. So. Okay. okay, now next, walking around, just kind mm -hmm. of uh, strolling around town, who is this guy? That is Munchkin. He's a 12 year old cicada tortoise or African spurred thigh. Is he going to get as big as a. Uh, um, about a boulder, yeah. Oh, about a boulder. Yeah, like about 100, 110 pounds, maybe, roughly. Oh, wow. I was thinking of Galapagos. No, not tortoises. as big as them. No, no. Okay. And he is a. Oh, don't bite my script there, little guy. And being a tortoise, not a turtle, so he yes. does not like the water. No, he cannot. He can't swim at all. He'll, he will sink and not be able to get back out. So. Okay. And so, of course, when taking in something like, you know, a tortoise you like that, you have to think about its future as well. Yes, because mm -hmm. they, they also, um, you know, live until about 90, 100 years old. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so what do you need to remember when you have a tortoise as a pet? Um, you need to have a future will for it and make sure that it's, you know, taken care of after you're passed on. Okay, so. last but not least, doesn't live quite as long. And actually, um, we found a new use for our scripts. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. for this guy. He's bearded gracious. dragon, who's he? Uh, this is Olive. She is a three-year-old, um, like I said, bearded. Um, she came to me about four months ago. Um, the family moved out of state and couldn't take her with her. Um, and uh, so she, Olive is actually up for adoption also. Okay. So. And if you're looking time-wise, uh, as far as lifespan, I should say, this would be the one to pick, yes, right? Yes, yes. These guys have roughly about 12 to 14 year okay. lifespan. Okay, and you'll be in an event this weekend? Yeah, sure. It's, uh, I'll be at the Lone Star Reptile Expo at the Sh uh, Shirts Civic Center. Okay, and she is a nonprofit, and there are a lot of mouths to feed, and so uh, donations are gladly accepted yes. as well. How many different animals do you have? I have roughly, uh, give or take, about 50 to 100. <laughs> Yeah. My wow. Yeah, I, I got my hands full. So. Speaking of mouths to feed, yes. this one's kind of hungry. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll give. Yes. Is, is that it, a commentary on our script? There? It's uh, <laughs> it's feeding day. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, it's feeding. Don't, <laughs> oh, oh, don't oh, you, that, you probably have some French toast on your <laughs> I'm thumb. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you'd like more information, Fletcher, uh, Fletcher Reptile and Bird Rescue, of course, going to be at the Lone Star Reptile Expo this Saturday and Sunday, starting at 10 a.m. the Shirt Civic Center. And as always, a lot of these animals are going to be up for adoption. Bring paper with you to feed them. Yes. <laughs> For more information or to donate, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the Yes Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Okay, don't stare at me. I didn't write it, okay? Just eat the, eat the script. Yes. Still ahead on SA Live, from Ellen to SA Live, a popular Instagram baker is getting ready for St. Patrick's Day, and he shows us step-by-step -step how to make delicious Irish whoopie pies. But first, oh, we hope you have a sweet tooth today. This local cookie shop keeps people coming back every week. How they do it, and we get a taste of their one-of-a-kind flavors. That's next on SA Live. 